After living 10 years as a celibate monk in a cloistered monastery in Hawaii, this would probably be the most important thing I could ever share with you, understanding how the mind works. There are two things we need to understand, awareness and the mind. Let's define what they are. Let's define awareness as a glowing ball of light. So imagine an orb, a glowing ball of light that can float around. Let's call that awareness and put that aside. Now let's define the mind. Let's define the mind as a vast space with many different areas within it. One area of the mind is angry, hatred, jealousy, joy, happiness, sex, food, art, science, technology, a whole bunch of different things, right? Your awareness, that ball of light can actually move to any area of the mind you want it to go to. So if your awareness, this glowing ball of light goes to the happy area of the mind, it lights up that particular area of the mind, you become you become conscious of being happy. Are you happy? No, you're in an area of the mind called happiness. If this ball of light goes to the angry area of the mind, it lights up that particular area of the mind. Are you angry? No, you're in an area of the mind called anger. And by using your willpower and your powers of concentration, you can actually take your awareness, this ball of light, to any area of the mind that you want to go to. So life is a manifestation of where you direct your energy. It truly is. You control where your awareness goes, you control where your energy is flowing and you control what's manifesting in your life. Right now, you are the sum total of where you've been investing your energy throughout your entire life. All day, we allow people and things around us to dictate where our awareness goes in our mind. People and things are two of the biggest consumers of energy and people and things also give you a lot of energy. Each day we have this much energy, we take our energy and we invest it into people and things around us. We keep investing, investing, investing until we have no more energy left. We get exhausted, that's usually around 11 or 11.30 or midnight. We go to sleep, our energy builds up again. We go out the next day and we invest our energy into people and things till we have no more energy. But, but the one thing most people don't do is we never evaluate who and what we're investing our energy in. So I always tell people to treat energy the same way you treat money. It's a finite resource that needs to be wisely managed, wisely reallocated, and wisely invested. You get told to concentrate, but you never get taught how to do it, right? If you want to be really good at concentration, you need to practice it all day. People are good at distraction because that's what they practice all day long. It's not that they don't have the ability to concentrate. They've just practiced distraction and become really, really good at it. I realize that life is finite, that I only have one life as me. And regardless of my beliefs, I know I have one existence and as Dandapani. And what happens after death, I'm not quite sure. And because I, my life is finite, I want to be extremely clear where to focus my energy. There's no point learning to concentrate if you don't know what to concentrate on. To know yourself is one of the greatest gifts you can give yourself. It truly is, right? Most people don't really understand themselves. They don't understand what they want in life and therefore find it extremely difficult what to focus their finite amount of energy on. Proceed with confidence. Believe in your ability to manifest something in your life because you can. How do you manifest something in your life? You take your awareness, you focus it on that thing. You know how to develop concentration now. You keep your awareness on it. When your awareness is on it, that's where your energy is flowing. When your energy flows there, it starts to manifest in your life. And believe in your ability to do that and proceed with confidence. confidence. Life is meant to be lived joyously. It truly is. And if you're not happy with life, then something needs to be changed. If you ask most people, what do they want in life? They'll always say, I want to be happy. Happiness should never be pursued. Don't pursue happiness. Pursue a lifestyle that results in happiness. And that's for me what I do. I never chase happiness. I pursue a lifestyle where the byproduct of the lifestyle is happiness. In order to find out what the lifestyle is, I need to know what my purpose in life is. In order to do that, I need to spend time with myself each day to find out who and what's important in my life, take that finite amount of energy that I have each day, focus it into those things. That starts to manifest in my life. The byproduct of that is happiness.